What do you consider to be an epic film? Lord of the Rings, Ben-Hur, Blade Runner? I believe there will be blood. Paul Thomas Anderson's depiction of an oil prospector's journey through the origins of the business deserves to be listed among these titles. I consider it an American epic because the themes in this film, power, religion, greed, which we'll be dissecting in this video, are rooted in American culture and the pursuit of happiness. Daniel Plainview and Eli Sunday represent two different sides of the same story, a story that all the Western world can relate to. There will be spoilers. flowing at many thousand barrels per day. I like to think of myself as an oil man. As an oil man, Daniel Plainview is an oil man. One in 20 will be oil men. The rest will be speculators. That's men trying to get between you and the oil men to get some of the money that ought by rights come to you. As an early prospector in the American race for oil, Plainview's grind is honest, single-handedly digging a hole, almost dying before cashing in on his first signs of oil, building a drill, using buckets to remove the oil by hand. It's like watching a documentary on the origins of oil business. Then the first accident. A father loses his life, and Daniel becomes a father to this orphan son. I run a family business. This is my son and my partner, H.W. Plainview. Daniel Day-Lewis is mesmerizing. Daniel, his character, is a businessman before businessmen had their reputation. The audience can see through his disguise. We are aware of his motives to expand the business he bled building. But it's not so easy for the characters Plainview interacts with. Like Paul, Paul approaches Plainview, the oil man, with a prospect, under the condition that he is paid $500 for the tip, a small price to pay for the promised land. Daniel and H.W. arrive in California in their version of the biblical promised land. Daniel is able to buy most of the land before other oil companies arrive. There is just one piece of land that Daniel is unable to purchase, but he brushes it off in hopes that the owner will change his mind, and the drilling begins. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. Amidst the rush of Daniel's business execution, he forgets about the land he couldn't buy, causing a snowball effect of misfortune very similar to the biblical story of Job, a follower of God whom the devil is allowed to test. In our film, however, God is oil and the devil is Eli. I've purposefully avoided Eli until this point. There are two schools of thought concerning Eli Sunday. First, it's obvious to assume that Eli is Paul's twin brother. What I believe, and what I think is P.T. Anderson's intent, is that Eli is also Paul, an alter ego used by Eli to cover up his sin of selling out his home for personal gain. I'll discuss this more in chapter three. When Daniel's drill explodes and H.W. is injured, rendering him deaf, Daniel blames it on Eli. Aren't you a healer? And a vessel for the Holy Spirit? When are you coming over and make my son here again? Can't you do that? Another test for our Job is the introduction of his brother. Able to let his guard down in the presence of family, Daniel reveals his desire to escape humanity. I can't keep doing this on my own. With these, um, people. <laughs> and his brother is potentially able to help him achieve this, until it's discovered that this man is an imposter and Daniel murders him. Unable to take care of his son, Daniel sends H.W. away. He abandons his child to pursue oil, very much replicating the act of God sending his only son, Jesus, to save the world. Yet, his acquisition of the final piece of land needed to build his fortune is possibly the most difficult price he has to pay. You should be lost in the blood of Jesus Christ. Being baptized symbolizes the end of his struggles in California, and much like Job, he's rewarded for the turmoil he suffered. The price he's paid, the performance he's made, makes him millions. He's the very definition of an oil tycoon.
Daniel sees through Eli's holy persona to his naked desire for praise and wealth. I'd like you to tell me that you are and have been a false prophet. The God is a superstition. He builds a narrative that solidifies the theory of Paul being an alter ego of Eli. It was Paul told me about you. He's the prophet. He's the smart one. He knew what was there and he found me. He has his own company now. A prosperous little business, three wells producing $5,000 a week. Single-handedly destroying the performance that Eli's created in order to achieve his worldly desires before killing him and ending the movie. I'm finished. This only scrapes the top of this deep-rooted theme, image, who we become to achieve what we want. As a free market, you can be or do whatever you want as a law-abiding American. When Daniel and H.W. first arrived in California, it wasn't as oil men, but as quail hunters looking to pay quail prices for what they knew was oil land. When the ruse was over, he used promises of schools, water. This community of yours will not only survive, it will flourish. To win the town over, just like Daniel puts on the mask of a family businessman to gain trust when buying land. I must be easy when you have such a cute face to carry around with you. Telling me how handsome my son is? Well, that I am. Keeping the secret from even H.W. till the end. Piece by piece, I don't even know who you are you have none of me in you, you're someone else's. Daniel is a false prophet who's fallen so deep into the image of a family businessman that he's no longer a man, just an image of his own success. Eli performed as both the holy man and as the businessman, with the latter leading to his own death. These images we as Americans conjure within ourselves, whether good or evil, are rooted in the very same capitalistic nature that made it possible for Daniel to be the force of greed he was. There Will Be Blood uses that story to say, hey, the grind, success is not everything. If you lose yourself in the pursuit of your desire, your desire has then consumed you. What is success if success does not reward us with happiness? There's not a better story depicting the ruthless grind of the American dream than this, when the bad guy gets everything he wants, but still isn't happy. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and please share. See you next Sunday.